Hello guys and welcome back to another FPL video. My name is FPL Meerkat and today we're going to be doing a deep dive into the goalkeeper position. I've got a list of premium goalkeepers and a list of cheap goalkeepers and I've given them my personal ranking on who is the best purchase for the 2022-23 season. So up first is the premiums. I've done a similar style here to FPL Raptor. I highly recommend you go check out his videos. He does, I think he does amazing work on his statistical analysis of uh, the FPL assets. So I've got a table here for you of what I think are some of the key aspects of each of the players here. So we've got saves per 90. Uh, so that's their average saves per game over 90 minutes. Their expected assists. Now for the goalkeepers, obviously they're not expected to get many assists. So I've done it for the entire season. Uh, their team's expected goals conceded per 90 minutes. Uh, di fixture difficulty. That is the difficulty of the fixture of their first five fixtures added up. So an, in a green fixture is two points. A uh, a a white fixture is three, a red fixture is four, and the hardest fixtures, uh, the Liverpool and the Man Cities away, are five points. So the lower the score, the better there. And minutes percentage. I've decided to do minutes percentage rather than total starts or uh, games played because I think minutes percentage gives you a rough idea of how, of not just how many starts the player plays and how many games they play, but also how likely they are to come off the pitch, how like how how injuries affected their season, uh, and it, it accumulates a lot of different factors. Obviously, for the goalkeepers, it doesn't affect too much because you're pretty much starting with you're pretty much expecting there to be a starting goalkeeper uh, for every match. But there is one keeper uh, missing from this list who I will get into in a bit. So top of the list, as you can see there, is Mendy. I think Edouard Mendy is the best choice. Uh, my own personal first choice, given the statistics. Uh, he offers potential to get some save points. Uh, their expected goals conceded per 90 is the third best, was the third best in the league last season. They, Chelsea have just recently signed uh, Koulibaly, who will really strengthen their defence, I think. Um, some of the easiest fixtures as well, and we, we know he's going to play every game. Kepa might get, get a game uh, if there's Champions League on the way, but I, I highly doubt uh, Mendy's going to be missing any games. Uh, and for five million, I think he's an absolute steal into the Chelsea defence. I think he's going to be, I think he is cheaper than any of the starting um, man, um, any of the starting Chelsea defenders. Uh, so I think he's a great insight into that. Ramsdale, I've put second. Uh, obviously uh, more potential for saves than Mendy, but less likelihood of clean sheets. And Arsenal, due to, um, according to the fixture difficulty ranking on FPL, do have the best opening fixtures. So I think Ramsdale is a fantastic choice. Uh, I don't think he is the best, but I certainly wouldn't put you off getting him. Uh, Edison I've put as third. Uh, he obviously plays for the best defence in the league, Man City, as you can see there, 0.66 expected goals conceded per 90. That's about two goals every three games, so every three games he's pretty much guaranteed a clean sheet. Very strong statistics, statistics. but obviously he's not going to get many save points, so I think if you're going to pick Edison, you're either going for a double up on the Man City defence, or you're... Well, yeah, I think you're just going for a double up on the on the Man City defence because I think the attacking output of the likes of Laporte, uh, Cancelo, uh, the cheap the cheapness of Walker, or if Cucurella signs Cucurella, um, are better options there. But I think Edison on his own is a very strong choice. Uh, fourth is Allison. Very similar reasons for Edison. Don't think he's quite as good. More potential for save points. Uh, less chance of clean sheets. But obviously plays for that very strong. Uh, Liverpool defence and some relatively good fixtures so he's just slightly worse than Edison and I think because you're more likely to triple up on other Liverpool assets uh, Alisson just comes just behind Edison. Uh, fifth Jose Sarr I think he's really going under a lot of people's uh, radars uh, 0.4 as well for the expected assists you remember he did get an assist last season um, and the Wolves defence were they were poor last season, but 
they we know they can be good at times and a lot of potential for save points as well uh, and given the fixtures that Wolves have got uh, um, to begin with I feel like they could get onto a very strong start uh, so I think Jose Sarr is actually quite a solid choice I think there's better choices at his bright price bracket but he's certainly a good differential option I think uh, at six we have Martinez um, uh, again, another one I feel is being very overlooked. Uh, fairly good potential for save points. Not too great for clean sheets. Uh, but as we've seen in the what was it, the 2019-20 season? Uh, no, 20 the 2021 season. Yeah, two seasons ago, we saw his incredible potential to get bonus points um, due to uh, well, he he took he was able to get bonus points ahead of the other Aston Villa defenders uh, when it came to nil nils and one nils. Um, so yeah, I think Martinez is a relatively good choice. Uh, seventh is Nick Pope. When I was initially looking at the game, I thought I had Nick Pope in one of my drafts, but he, I, I realized that uh, Newcastle's opening fixtures are very varied. Uh, he has a good fixture to start off with, but then he plays, I think he plays Man City and then Liverpool in game weeks three and five. Uh, so if you're going to go for Nick Pope, I think you'll have to go with a 4.5 million substitute keeper to rotate with, because I don't think you're going to want him for those two games unless you're thinking he's going to get save points, which is a, a, a very fair strategy. And that expected goals conceded for Newcastle is actually one of the worst in the league, surprisingly. Uh, but do remember that they made all those signings in January and completely changed their team around, and their goals conceded, expected goals conceded for the second half of the season was significantly better than the first half. So that's actually the two combined together. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, he's a relatively good choice. Number eight, uh, De Gea. Uh, I just don't think we can trust the Man United defence. I know they've recently just signed uh, Martinez, uh, who will certainly strengthen their side, and they've looked very good in pre-season, but I just think they're prone to those mistakes. Uh, and the only, one of the only goalkeepers on there with 100% uh, minutes percentage, he didn't miss a single minute in the Premier League uh, last season, but I just think there's better choices at his price bracket. I think he's one of the lower-down options. Uh, Larice at ninth, which I think is a bit mean on Larice, but because he's that 0.5 extra... Allison and Edison are just better choices than him. I mean, for the expected goals conceded, 1.15 is quite a lot higher. Uh, it's, it, he, I think I believe they're the, they were the fifth best defence last season. Uh, saves, he might get you some save points, but I just think he's uh, the worst 5.5 option on the list, so I wouldn't really be going anywhere near him. And Schmeichel at 10th. Uh, obviously, insane potential for expected save, for saves, but expected goals conceded is very bad for Leicester. They conceded a ton of chances. And as we saw, there was a lot of rotation for the backside, uh, <laughs> back line, maybe I should say, uh, in their defence. So, yeah, and the fixtures are all right for Leicester. So I'd say he's last on the list. There is a, there is a very obvious absence here of uh, Fabianski and Ariola. I haven't included them because, I mean, it looks nice having only 10 on the table. But I'd say he, they're the worst options because we don't actually know which one's going to start. Fabianski seemed to start most of the Premier League games and then Ariola started the Cup games. It might be a similar thing next season, but I think that's going to have to be a wait and see because uh, I think I feel like Fabianski is being... Um, fizzled out of West Ham's side and Ariola is being brought in as the new starting goalkeeper um, and West Ham's defence is decent but again I think there are just cheaper and better options for the West Ham defence so yeah I wouldn't be going near any, either of them uh, but yeah let's go into the cheap goalkeepers so here are the cheap goalkeepers and as you can see topping the list is Raya I actually made this list before Brentford signed another goalkeeper, but I believe that Raya is the best choice at the 4.5 million bracket if he can keep his starting place. Um, <clears throat> I think based on the stats, uh, his saves per minute, uh, saves per 90 uh, is very strong, pretty much getting you a point each game on average. 
uh, and expected goals conceded one of the best. Uh, I, b I believe they're quite low down in the rankings. Um, there's a lawnmower going outside. Uh, uh, but, and Brentford have some of the best starting fixtures as well. But as you can see, 63% uh, minutes percentage. Obviously, he got injured uh, near the start of the season. I don't think that's too much to worry about, though. Uh, goalkeepers don't tend to get injured very often. Um, and not for prolonged, uh, obviously Raya's injury was for quite a bit of time, but I think he proved he came straight back from the injury and I believe he got in, even got into the Spain squad. Uh, and I think Sanchez might have as well. I think Raya's Spanish. I think I'm not missing that. Um, but yes, very good. Uh, Sanchez is number two. Uh, honestly, I think I'd put him as number one now based on the fact that Brentford has signed a new goalkeeper. Slightly worse fixtures than Brentford. Uh, slightly less saves per 90 but obviously that high 0.68 expected uh, 64 uh, expected assists uh, so maybe one of the more likely goalkeepers to get an assist at least that was shown last season uh, you'd hope to get a assist at some point from your goalkeeper something of FPL dreams um, and the 1.25 expected goals conceded per 90 Brentford one of the best teams especially outside the top six uh, in terms of goal conceded. So I think Raya and Sanchez are definitely, definitively my two, top two picks. Pickford coming in at third, I think he's a decent pick if you're looking for those save points. Uh, Everton tended to concede a lot of shots um, in uh, the Premier League last season. We'd expect them to come back firing a lot more. Uh, Everton have some of the strongest fixtures uh, in uh, to start, uh, out of all the Premier League teams to start with. Uh, but their expected goals conceded per 90 is quite uh, it's, it's quite abysmal, to be honest. It's, I think it's fourth worst in the league. Uh, and minutes percentage, we know Pickford's going to play every minute. Uh, I think those only minutes were when he was rotated once. I think he might have been injured for one game. Um, you know, we're, we expect him to play every single game. So I think Pickford is a fairly solid shout. Uh, I've got Johnston as fourth. Uh, I've put asterisks on a lot of these stats, as you can see. The asterisks are for um, stats that weren't specific to the team. So, as you can see for Johnson there, 4.49 saves per 90. So that was for last season for West Brom, who were conceding a lot of shots. A lot, a lot of shots. And obviously, he no longer plays for West Brom. So we'd expect those saves per 90 to go down quite drastically, but obviously I've got to fill in the table, so that's why the stat's there. And 0.74 expected assists. I remember when he, when he played in the Premier League, he did nearly get a couple of assists, so maybe it's quite an oddball pick to go for Johnston. Now obviously he signed for Crystal Palace. Um, and this is obviously, of course, if he is to be the starting goalkeeper. We'd assume he'd start over Guaita, who had a fairly all right... Um, previous season. Uh, the problem is Crystal Palace have some of the worst starting fixtures uh, and the, minute, the minutes percentage again very variable on that was that was based on his time at West Brom and we'd assume that he'd get most of the minutes at Crystal Palace but if he's nailed I think he's a good choice but certainly not for the start of the season. Um, at fifth we have Meslier purely for the save points. I mean you're not picking a Leeds defender to try and get clean sheets are you? Uh, we all know that Leeds are a very attacking side. They have some of the best fixtures, but you can pick Meslier just for those save points and those good fixtures. I think there might be the odd tr chance of getting a clean sheet here and there. Um, but Meslier, you know, if you're comparing him to some of the other goalkeepers, if teams are conceding, if every team's conceding, Meslier is probably going to be one of the top scoring goalkeepers because he's going to be conceding a lot of shots, getting those save points. And whenever goalkeepers concede and they get one or two points, Meslier could get three or four, maybe even five, just because uh, Leeds suffer that many shots, he can rack up the saves and the bonus points. So I quite like Meslier as a pick, um, but in terms of obviously the clean sheet points are where the most points are at for, uh, for goalkeepers, he's fairly low down on the rankings. Uh, Bazunu, Bazunu, I believe that is, at sixth, uh, obviously signed for Southampton. Again, we'd assume he's going to be the starting keeper. He might not be. Uh, but again, Southampton are fairly difficult fixtures and their expected goals conceded was, I believe, the second worst uh, of the teams who are still up in the Premier League. 
That is, that's obviously excluding um, not the likes of Norwich and Watford and Burnley. Um, so again, minutes percentage might be skewed, uh, and the saves per 90, again, that was for, uh, I believe he was on loan somewhere, wasn't he? Uh, Portsmouth? Yeah, I think he was on loan at Portsmouth last season. So again, that's quite different stats there. Um, number seven, we have Henderson, who has just signed for Nottingham Forest. I've put most of the, <coughs> I've put, uh, apart from Guaita, who's the only one there who I wouldn't say is nailed, uh, or likely to start. Um, I've put most of the promoted sides goalkeepers near the bottom. Uh, this is purely because I think they're going to be getting the least clean sheets. Um, they might rack up the save points here and there, same as Meslier, but I, I feel that the promoted teams are going to have a lot more bite about them, and I don't think they're going to concede. I don't think as many shots are going to get through to the goalkeeper, if that makes sense. I think they're going to block a lot more shots. Um, and I'd say of the promoted uh, promoted side, Henderson, I feel, has the best, has the strongest chance of getting those points. Uh, even though the fixtures aren't great, uh, I feel like he's got a strong point, a strong chance of getting those points. And the 95% there is based on his, oh goodness me, what is that based on? I think that's based on his time at Sheffield, yes, that's based on his time at uh, Sheffield United a couple of years ago. Uh, obviously I wasn't going to put for Man United because he didn't start a single minute and putting 0% is not fair because he's obviously not been signed to play 0 minutes. Um, at eighth we have Rodak, uh, I think just, I, th I feel like Fulham have a slightly stronger defence than uh, Bournemouth. Obviously, the saves per 90 and the expected goals conceded per 90 are very skewed. And I think Rodak, uh, looking there, I believe didn't... Yeah, he didn't play all the games. Uh, I believe that uh, Gazaniga uh, played a few of them. But I think he's now become nailed on as the starter. And at ninth, we have Travers. I think all, uh, I think all of these promoted teams... Uh, goalkeepers are definitely wait and sees. I don't think they're going to be. They 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 do all have pretty horrendous fixtures. So I think it's just waiting to see whether they are any good. And I think if there could be a potential swap. I just think the likes of Raya and Sanchez are far safer bets uh, than any of the promoted teams. And Guaita at tenth for obvious reasons. I don't think he's going to be playing many minutes. Um, Playing for Crystal Palace, he might be looked to move on. Crystal Palace have one, had one of the strongest defences, so whichever one of those two, Johnstone and uh, Guaita, is a great pick, but not right now because they probably have the worst opening fixtures out of any of the teams. So they would be possibly a choice to sub in later on during the season, but I think to start off with, not right now. So that is it for the goalkeepers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I will have videos on later on about the defenders, midfielders and forwards positions. So please subscribe if you'd like to see any of them and get down in the comments about your choice of who you, who, who, which goalkeeper are you going with? Are you going with that set and forget goalkeeper? Are you going cheap? Are you going premium? Let me know what you guys are going to do and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.